some long runs, we got some short runs. But either way, we're gonna get it done. You are now watching the 2023 season of Farming with Duffy Ag. Welcome back to the channel. I am over here. I'm in the Freightliner. We are getting it going. So, what are we doing today? Well, it rained quite a bit. If it didn't rain this morning, I was going to go do some trucking. Then we we're going to go up and run. I don't know if they got a half inch of rain up there or not. We're gonna go find out. We're gonna try to open some fields up so that tomorrow we can just run. So, a little bit of progress is better than no progress. So, taking this over, we're going to Digert's and see how them they're doing there. How you doing? Where's your friends? How have you been? You staying out of trouble today? It's wet, it's a wet one for sure. How are you doing? Did you throw up a hot dog last night? Yeah. Hey, I'm not feeding either of you right now. You're doing good. Alrighty, what is... I don't know if this is in there or not. So, I did commandeer Robert's car. He actually came. He needed lunch. We got lunch, and we're on the move. So, let's get going. Hands for the trucks a little bit before we get rolling today. Um, since you have to see. A little mud season, but over here at Digert's. What are you doing, buddy? Gonna be here for the next next little bit. So let's see what Isaiah's doing in life. What are you doing, bud? You get anything done? Give her more see, fuel. More fuel, all of the fuel. That's how you blow motors up, they tell me. Yeah, you gotta watch that <laughs> I would know. gauge. <laughs> No. He's got aluminum pistons or steel? Those are We'll find steel. out later. Well, either way. There's no EGT gauge in here, so you don't have to watch it. No, it's a Mac. Goes and goes and goes. Dude. Jake breaks for everybody. Everybody's getting Jake breaks. Jake Smith, ladies and gentlemen. future generation helping. They're teaching Isaiah how not to break things. <laughs> so I'll change out one valve. This actually has all new, has new springs, new drums, new pads, new cans. And it was still stopping a little weird. So we're thinking the valves are bad. So we changed one just to see. And they worked on the motor. Jake brake uh, wire was messed up, oil leak. And then we should be good to rock and roll, but having brakes on this is kind of a priority. You like, you like brakes? Hey, what happened to the hood? Because people are gonna ask. Little contact, bumping. Yeah, bumping's racing. Ru rubbing is racing, bumping is racing. Yeah, it was you got a, a new hood though, and a, new lights. Yeah, it was a sad day. He did almost cry. He told everybody he forgot to set the brakes like I did and ran into something. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Well, we don't we don't even want to tell everybody what it what it collided with. We'll let them speculate, you know. It, I'm sure it wasn't anything green. It must have been something else. <laughs> well, there you guys have it. But new hood you found in the bushes down the road from my house. That's been there since new. <laughs> okay. We're gonna have a good day? Gonna have a good day? Good days, come on. Alrighty, we're gonna get rolling. So, boys are out here with us. Oh my God, I, I forgot about it. Oh, sorry bud, let me get the paper towels for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, Rob left his 
his radio transmitter too so and a red bull which i don't drink red bull anyways but rob had a previous incident and uh the seat broke so this is a seat that was supposed to be in the truck years and years and years ago and it actually went in spare seat in the uh yellow mac so hopefully we got better brakes we are going to chop literally right here and see if we can go um if not we'll go to a different field if not after that we'll go to a different field so we're very well spread out here we got a lot of options but we'll get we'll get going see how the seat works out too get our snacks Go. Got an armrest. This is living. And we're into the first field. Let's see how we get along here. We got probably four, maybe four days left here. Get right after it. We got some long runs, we got some short runs. But either way, we're gonna get it done. Three hundred and sixty? Three hundred and sixty loads and then we are done. So Jake is keeping track of it. There are leftover corn is over there from 2022. And then everything else once they're done putting enough feed up for the side for the cows is gonna get combined. So they got both tractors here. We got Robbie. Robbie used to us a tour around the place. We gotta hear about all the big news they had. They were expecting 300 3,000 people here on Saturday. Um Sunday. They figured they had 4,000 people, so they had a good turnout. We were chopping. Um, the guys did come through and whatnot, but yeah, that's the first two loads in the bunk. 358 more to go. 358. 358 Look, I can count. <laughs> I take it once it dries out a little bit. Loose moose is going to be right after it. There's uh, one of their crawlers. That one doesn't have the cr crane frame on it, but to pick it up as we saw at Eric Mattis they did have that one sitting there at one point so I don't know how many Roger actually has but he'll jump in that pit get that pit agitated up he's pretty close to being full because you got to think plant water and everything else from their processing plant goes in there so it adds up quickly manure there's always manure to move on a dairy always five loads off we're moving right through this field so we're gonna split it. A little wet in one spot down there when you're fully loaded. I do really enjoy splitting fields with my truck because I can get right up on it. I can see everything pretty much in the front. It wouldn't be so good to run into the back of the truck. We didn't make it very long and uh, windows dirty. So came in hot sideways to get back up that row and chopper driver uh, got me. Uh, didn't even open up the field like that. Well, we did open up the field and it stayed clean. So. We are almost done with this field though, which is a good feeling because we've got a long way to go. I don't know if this is our 10th, 10th load between the two of us, maybe 12th. This might be number 10, that might be number 11 right there. So, 340 more to go. I'm not actually keeping track that well. After you go past 10, it kind of all blurs together. But Jake is there and he's got, he's writing them down. So we'll always have to have a little update at the end of the day, how many we got. And then, like I said, I figure we're probably here for three or four days. So today we talked about just opening up and getting the fields ready for tomorrow so that we have three trucks running, maybe a cart. And uh, when we get long runs, then I'll bring my truck back and run with that. But right now it's uh, 
it's it's adequate with two. We're literally next to the next to the pit. So eleven loads on nine acres, I think, is what Jake just told me. Oh, yeah, that'd be eleven, eleven and a half or so. Swing it out back here and keep keep her moving. It is starting to rain some more, which they kind of tell you it's going to do that, and then they kind of don't. Right here, um, yeah, wet, lower corn, but as we get around the corner, you'll see what's going on. He's spinning. I'm spinning. Whoa. It's taking me wherever I want to go, and I'm on the roadway, but... Yeah, the corn will jump up. Robbie's got some pretty good corn this year. Well, we're bunched up right now, only because Ronnie had to go out back to turn around. Same as what I did the last load. And by the time he got turned around, I was already full again. And it is, it's just slimy. Like even the roadways are slimy, the field's slimy. We are, we're making pretty good progress for uh, being a Monday afternoon, going into the evening. And, uh, yeah, if it didn't rain, we'd be really, really good, but Mother Nature. So, I'm glad we missed most of the rain. I'm glad we didn't get any of that hurricane. So, you boys in Maine that all got a bunch of corn flattened, I'm feeling for you guys. Good luck during harvest, because I know uh, you're all going to need it with all the rain you guys got in the growing season. 40 some. Did I see 40, 42 inches of rain during the growing season for some of the guys up there? So, and now they got a, the hurricane that went through that made it even worse. We're blessed we didn't get that hurricane. We're here, and the nutritionist is here, and he's checking on the corn, making sure everything's set right, because you only got one time to really do this. In a year at least with grass for if you do three cuttings four cuttings five cuttings you can get better cut length daytime and stuff like that corn we're here for four days and uh then we're gone so all your corn's coming in really really quick so he must have had an adjustment or something he wanted different they're in midship of the chopper there so messing with the kernel processor i would say um most of that is done automatically, but maybe it wasn't moving or something was weird. So they're checking it out. Nutritionist took samples from the first uh, field. Probably does a shaker test, see what sees what particular size map is on each level and how much of it, what percentage of that of that is, uh, to see if the cut length is right, and then check uh, kernel processing score of it. So as far as how much it crushes down. Cows are the same way as humans. If you don't chew that down to little things, and cows really don't, they don't chew. They regurgitate their feed, um, and they don't have teeth on the top. So they're not chewing on things. That's how they're breaking it down in their stomachs. But uh, yeah, a little fact for you guys. Well, little bovine science for you guys. And uh, so if you do not process that kernel properly, more rate of passage through them, and then it doesn't, they don't utilize the nutri nutritional value of that kernel. So that is a big thing. And you can see it in cow's manure that it's full kernels, which means you're not utilizing your feed. So there's a lot of science that goes into making milk and hats off to nutritionists. There, it's, if things are going good, okay the nutritionist is doing good if things are going bad it's the nutritionist's fault so and there's a, there's a lot lot that goes on there you can change one thing and three other things can go out of whack or you can change one thing and everything's great so it's a balance act as far as what you have to feed what you can buy in to make it still profitable and uh what your dry cow program transition program uh pre uh, dry cow pre-fresh tra well transition is pre-fresh um, fresh cow program and so on and so on and
and your repo side of it because if you're not getting cows bred on time then your cows are getting fat then you got fat cows that are calving in once they do get pregnant and then they're having DAs and then it's just a, you're not making milk so there's a lot that goes on I know I just rambled a lot of things off but that is why right now it's better to say okay get it right tinker and then follow up and check on it throughout the harvest so yeah and each nutritionist has a different mindset each people different people have different mindsets different parts of the world have different mindsets I know some places cut it long shredlage um, and some places want it fine 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 so it depends on the program but, yeah that was the gist of uh, what's going on here well we've dropped we've dropped uh, like a thousand foot and uh, Aaron's checking over what they adjusted what the results were we're all thinking So what are you trying to change? The, trying to change the processor because we're it's close but it's not quite close enough. Yeah. I think we went the wrong way. I think we went the wrong way with it. Because it's a lot bigger. Yeah. Yeah, the chunks there and but it's still too many holes. It's processed, but it's not down to the grade they want. So there's always a processing score when uh, you send out a feed sample, they tell you digestibility, uh, how it is nutrition nutritionally, and then what your processing score is. And like that, cow will utilize it some, but not enough. So closing it up, which there's two rolls in there and they run at different speeds, well, slightly different speeds. I think this one runs at slightly different speeds. And that allows it to actually break the kernels. Right? What do you think of that? Does that have to be better? A little better? That is a whole one. Yep. We gotta fix that. They're working on it. Definitely some good corn. Plenty of grain content. So I know like in Texas, the guys down there, they'll grow like five foot tall corn, but their ears are massive and they'll still make 20 plus ton corn silage because the weight's in there. And that's really, you got the forage side, but the grain side, if you get more grain. So like some people will chop it taller so that they have more grain content in their silage. Well, I guess we're doing some adjustments. We got it figured out. What did you add? What you, what'd you got? Burgers. Oh my God. Would you look at this? This is ranked the world's best lemonade ever. It is. Ever. I thought that was a beer in there, bro. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Rundown of what just happened. The keyway was out of a was out of it. It had walked its way out. Fix that. Got it all lined up. Pulled the processor back so that we could know that it was at one millimeter set. Now he's gonna tell the computer that it is set at one millimeter. We wanted to verify that. Probably could have got away with not doing that, but at the end of the day, it's better to know and then run from there. So we did all that. He's gonna set that, then they, they can set it at the one millimeter. We'll chop a little bit, mark the nutritionist is hanging out with us, and he's gonna check it over and see how that, he likes it. Also, Jake brought us some hamburgers and some lemonade so I don't even know what time it is now seven o'clock we'll chop a little bit and then see Jake what do you think gonna be better I don't know gonna be the best ever
That's all. This is a real test. Huh? Hey, I'm learning. You can dump it. You got a you percentage of what's left. You didn't even have a start weight there, Mark. No, I was just doing some. Come on, we're feeding cows. We ain't rocket science this year. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Come on, look at all that grain there, Mark. Come on. Can't be doing that bad. That's still short, right? Yeah, our, our length. I don't think we're finding our length, right? Right. And that's right. why I didn't. That's why I didn't bother to do our numbers now. But can we blame some of this on the corn, the maturity of the corn, or no? <coughs> Technically, drier corn blows apart better. Okay. Right? You would think so, yes. One thing is, we don't know if we're 1.1 millimeters all the way across either, do we? Yeah. We I, checked, I checked it all the way across it. did? Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. When we had it at 1.2, or whatever, 1.4, mm -hmm. check that both sides are all even. Just finishing up here. So I dumped my load, Robbie's pack, pushing up. 2023 number one chocolate milk in New York State. We're gonna have to have them give us a rundown of that tomorrow. So, alrighty, I'm gonna go see what they're, they're figuring on that corn. So, where they're at right now is the nutritionist, as he said, if you were gonna feed that corn in six months, it would be broke down way more. But two months from now, if you start feeding that corn, the cow's not gonna utilize that half kernel as much as it could to make milk. Well, we are home, me and Yanko, and yeah, tomorrow's another day. Today was really a trial run, get everything dialed in for them, how they want it. We got a little adjustment that could go on on the chopper. Uh, we're gonna do some things, call some people, see some stuff. But pretty much, processor is set, and uh, tiny adjustment. So, at the end of the day, Quality cow chow going into Daggerts because they are number one chocolate milk in New York State. So we'll have to see what goes on tomorrow and see how much we get done. But I appreciate you guys watching along and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.